Any 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 progress? Yeah, I can see it now. I'm up okay. now. Yes, yes. yes. Right. I'm using two screens so that I should be able to see Ali Mishtatfim as much as I can. And as a result, it's getting a little bit more complicated. Okay. Right, let's get back. So this is um where's my chalet? You there? But how do they call swimming trunks in your part of the world? Oh, you're, you're muted, never. I said no idea. <laughs> okay. All right. So we, we call them swimming trunks, and I think they call them in America bathing suits. So he's asking the following that they're not going to have the kids going swimming chas with Shalom on Shabbos, um, but the camp has got very strict rules that the Bochim, even if they want to just go to the pool just for a mikvah, it's not in, they wouldn't be allowed to go um, as the other Mauritian Paran They would have to wear, wear bathing suits, uh, bathing suits or swimming trunks. So he had seen that I'd written about this, that you are allowed to, and he wanted to uh, kind of run it, run it through again. So I, of course, I had always been under the impression that you're not allowed to go into uh, a pool wearing wearing um, cloth because it might because then you might come to squeeze it etc. Let me first address a point about using a swimming pool for a mikveh. Really, the pashtas a swimming pool is not kosher as a mikveh. Even when we say for tvilas ezra, where tvilas ezra means it's just for a a, a, a lesser tumor and maim shuvim, which means water brought by buckets is kosher. A, a fill a, 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 a swimming pool which is running is a, a filter running that's water which is zoichalin, is water which is running. And Hoskim generally take the view that that's called uh, it's by posolemic. Having said that, the, there are Hoskim who are makal and they do recognize. Traveling even in a filter when the filter is running, it's still valid for uh, to some degree. So uh, we're not going into that discussion. Le Poil, but I, it's important to discuss this because I know there's a story about someone who uh, would, would somewhere in America he would travel his dishes in his swimming pool, and he says in camp he uses as a mikvah. So therefore, it's kosher to travel your dishes also. So it's important when we discuss this to know it's not a kosher a mikvah. But for the Bachrim who want to travel Shabbat morning before davening the Madrichim, so they're asking, could they use, um, could they use swimming trucks? So first of all, let's go back and discuss. Excuse me, Dave Ruskin. If you're talking about a fearless Ezra, I was given to understand from good rabbinical sources that it's not applicable today. But maybe I got it. Fearless Ezra is not a chiyu, but definitely. It's on the level of Lifnimashur Sadin, and there's lots right. of examples. The Rambam says, Not in the Rambam is in Mishnah Torah, but in, 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 in a letter. The Poyal certainly Chsidim are very particular. Um, the Indian of Tvila says, and even Tvila Tzam for, you know, for uh, Toysvah's Kedusha. All right, so now let's take a look on the first question, where the assumption is that you're not going to go swimming on Shabbos. Why can't you go swimming on Shabbos? So now the main reason why you can't go swimming on Shabbos is because you might rip off a branch and make some kind of float. Now, it does say in Shukhan that if the pool is not a, where it's outside, where there's branches and trees, if it's going to be in a place which is surrounded with walls and it's not, it's not like a, how do you say, like a beach, like a coast. It's like deep, it's got walls around the water. So then you are allowed to bathe in, if it's cold. Hot water is a different thing because the bathing attendants used to heat the pools on Shabbos. But what's it with, with cold water? Is it okay to have a cold shower on Shabbos, the kids? Say. So here we have this discussion over here in Shechon since Shechon And he says, we've got various complications. First of all, if it's open air, if you walk with the water, you might be carrying water on your body, dial dumps. Then he says there's an issue of, of, of swimming and um, making bits float. 
Then he says there's an issue of squeezing, wringing out the water from your hair. All of these on their own are perhaps manageable. But he finishes off, that's the last paragraph. Since people are broadly and not so knowledgeable how to avoid these pitfalls, the Minig Ashkenaz is not to bathe even in cold water on Shabbos. So if someone asks, can I have a cold shower? It's a very hot day. So Bichlal, the answer is you don't, we don't Minig is not to have a, even a cold shower on Shabbos. When it comes to Marshall Shavuos, it's two days and there's a Shabbos before or after. And people are platting, they're going crazy because they're all sticky all over. What on. about on your... Dime, Dime Raskin, what about Shanyamta? Just a second, so it's the same thing. So then, but when a person is is coming, he's very, very uncomfortable, the whole objection to bathing in cold water is on the level of Minhag. So when he's very mitzayin, then we can rely on the more lenient, that the Ikiradin, that, it's, that it is permitted. So, all right, so therefore, the, the assumption of the questioner that we're not going to do swimming on Shabbos is absolutely correct. That the minig is that you don't do swimming on Shabbos, even though the circumstances are that there are walls around it. I mean, how did it would be okay? But the point of the minig is not to do bathing on Shabbos, even in cold water. So now the question is, can they dip in the mikvah wearing swimming trunks? So I was actually quite shocked. And I saw this in a safer if you can see, the Sefer is written, it's called a Sefer called Vahib in Soya. It's written in Belgium, in Antwerp. And he writes, where the Mokrin, Shetov al Bebrech in Beged Yam. If you are dipping in a, in a pool with a swimming uh, swimsuit, where the Bailim Makpidim, where the oh, um, proprietors are insistent that you dafka wear a, 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 a garment when you're toveling, so you're allowed to dip with it and afterwards you're allowed to remove it. But you should be careful. You shouldn't shake it out. Because shaking it out is also a form of squeezing. And then he says, also you would be able to wear it wet and put on your clothes over it and then walk home. Now let me, let me discuss this a little bit. First of all, the source in Gemara. This is from a contemporary book, Sefer, written in Antwerp by someone called Sofer, a Moshe Sofer, I don't know him. You have a Gemara, which talks about a person on Yom Kippur. He wants to get to the other part of town, to be Macabre Pudei Raboy, or whatever it may be. There's some mitzvah need. And he wants to go, but in between him and the other side of town, there's a, there's a river. Is he allowed to wade through the river on Shabbos? So it says in the Gemara that he's allowed to wade through the river. It talks about how high the water may be. We talk about a person wading through the river, so he's got forces going to soak his clothes. Ah, in other places it says you shouldn't walk in a place where you might slip into the mud. So the answer is, if you are getting wet inadvertently, then there's the worry you might come to wring it out, wring out the garments. Therefore, you shouldn't walk in a place where you might slip and fall into the mud. But where you know consciously you're going to wade through water, so Mina didn't allow to go through there. So that's where that's the, the origin of this psaac, that you would be allowed to go into the pool wearing a beggar yam, wearing the swimming trunks, um, taking them off, not physically, not deliberately wringing them out, just taking them off carefully without squeezing to, to take, would also be permitted. And here he has the next thing. You've got this, let's say you've gone to the beach, uh, and from the beach to your place, there's, no, there's a street, there's just a rabbim in between. So he said you're allowed to wear the the swimming trunks are under your trousers and you walk home wearing your, your wet swimming trunks under your, he says that's also allowed. That's, this is one source. The other source here is from a savior called Vayan David. Now, what I find interesting is that this is from Reb, um, Reb David Weiss, Reb Chaim Yosef David Weiss, who is otherwise known as Chido. Chido Weiss is also a rov in Antwerpen, and he gives the same sack. So I wonder whether the two Antwerpen and Rabonim um, discuss with one another, but they, you do have this. He brings it other sources that you are allowed to toivel if necessary, of course. 
of course, uh, this is a uh, when there's no uh, no no other alternative. But he says that, that would also be okay. All right. Let's go on. The next thing which I have here, a teacher asked me. She's teaching brachas. She's teaching girls in school, and we have three brachas which talk about Shloyasani Goy, Shloyasani Oved, Shloyasani Isha. Most of davening, we're talking to Hashem. It's not talking about me, it's talking about Hashem. But there are a few areas in davening which are describing myself. So does a girl say, a woman, does a girl say moide ani or moda ani? Because correct Hebrew would be, for a woman, Describing yourself, you'd say Ani Moda rather than Ani Mode. That's a bit Ani, it's not a brocha. Then you have Shiloya Sani Goy. Perhaps she should say Shiloya Sani Goyo. Shiloya Sani Eva Oven, Shiloya Sani Shivcha. So there are those who take that view that she should kind of modify the brocha according to her own identity. The Rebbe was asked this question. And he kind of says, Keminig, just ask what the minig of the tradition is. He says, the Rebbe does not take an assertive position. He leaves it, whatever the minig is, in that community or in that, that family, you'd follow that. I want to also say, you've got the bracha for a Shiloyo San Isha. I heard of a particular place that the women were saying, they down knelt in uh, the Chabad Siddha, Chabad Siddha, it says Shiloyo San Isha. So the women were saying Shiloyo San Isha. Because it says in the Siddur, it doesn't have my mind, obviously a shtus, because you'd have to know Pirish and it's not true. You can't say a dvar shekel. The question it is. It would just be politically correct, Diane. <laughs> they say, <laughs> so there is an Ashkenaz Nusach alternative. We've not mentioned the Gemara, but the woman says, that Hashem created as he wished. Again, the Rebbe was asked this. Again, it wasn't a clear cut answer. Ask the Minagnoshim, Skainos, etc. As far as I know, the, um, the guidance which is given in Base Rifka School in New York was not to teach this, to, not to uh, um, institute to say this bracha. I must say, though, in my own family, my, my wife's family, they, they did say this bracha. And I just want to say, it's just where we'll share one thought on this, which I offer in the classes with the girls. They I, did or they didn't? Um, Rabbi Lu again? The wife's family, they did, they did. They say, they did. They, did. they, did. they said, Shalasana Kitsano. Yes, that's what my wife tells me. Um, now, I want to just share with you one thought. It's always, this is a mamash, a political hot potato, this Shaloya Sanish. Today, you have, you have a, an obsession of Rahman al Islam, this transgender uh, operation. And this transgender operation is saying, I'm not happy who I am. I think if I'll be something else, I'll change my identity. I'll be, a be, I'll, I'll be better with myself. It's, it, it's an expression of a deep, uh, how do you say, uh, dissatisfaction with oneself, with the way I am, and hoping that I change into a different, uh, different identity, I'll be better. Zokmin Shiloyosan Isha, the man is given there is an attraction over there. Thank Hashem the way you are. Shaloya Sanish. A woman, whether she does say, doesn't say, but the sentiment should be. The Abish to create me the way I am, I should be grateful for the way the Abish created me. This is my shlichus. This is the way my mission. And I should be thankful and I should rise to, uh, to whatever the Abish to put on my plate. I want to go on to the next point, which also I got last week. Um, on, after this year, this, 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 this slot. And the woman asked me, can she, she's actually somewhere in uh, Southern Europe, hot weather, can she wear a sweater, which we call in English a jumper? Can, you wear, can she wear a sweater tied around her waist? As you often see, uh, teenagers or whatever, they have a, 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 a jumper, and when it's hot weather, they tie it around their waist. Now, she probably has a long walk on Shabbos, from her to where she goes to the shul or whatever it may be, and or to her children perhaps, she wants to take a sweater, but if it's going to be hot weather, whether she can wear it around her waist. I understand where she's coming from. 
my immediate reaction was, that's not okay. But then, I have a hechrich, I have to say a shir. So I, I looked it up, and uh, I, I was, uh, this is just from the Sefer Piskat Shubas. Oh, no, sorry, it's from a different Sefer. But Sefer Piskat Shubas gave me this sort. Are you allowed to tie a sweater? Yeah, that's how you write sweater in Hebrew. Are you allowed to tie a sweater around your uh, waist and leave the main body of the sweater hanging? So he says very clearly that that's not okay. Now, interesting, those who have been joining us with the Gemara Shia in the evening, uh, we've been learning recently about wearing a talus um, folded. So you can, now, you can fold the talus in the normal way of wearing, but let's say you have a talus and it's all folded in a not normal way of wearing. So the majority of the talus is on your shoulders rather than being worn in a way that covers the majority of the body. So the Gemara says that you do that, you're, you're, you're carrying the talus in the street. You're not allowed to do that, that way. wear it that way. And so here is the same thing. A jumper is not a belt. A jumper is, is made to be worn on your, on your chest and to cover it. Oh, it's got arms also. But wearing it in this way is really a form of, and I went through this perhaps, I don't remember, um, in this year. What's the difference in, in Yiddish? We have the same word for wearing and for carrying. We say the word trogena mantle and trogena valiske. In French, you say porte un manteau, porte une valise. It's the same word. So here, when you have this sweater tied around your waist, are you wearing it or are you carrying it? Is it transportation or is it, is it wearing it? And my, my understanding, and I was pleased to see that I'm not the first one who came to that conclusion, this is not a way of wearing. This is a way of having the sweater with you when you're going from A to B because you need it at a later point, but it's not a way of wearing the sweater. I'm not dealing with the, um, the Derek Eretz aspect, but it's respectable. That's, no, that's, that's for a separate discussion. Diane Ruskin? Yes. I remember as a kid doing this, and the teacher would say, wear it around your waist. So you have to physically say, it, wear it around your waist. My question to you is, was he your English teacher or was he your Yiddish teacher? <laughs> oh, you're, oh, you're right. You know, I think it was my rubber. Sorry, Dan Ruskin. Aloch, The benoigea to wearing one's jacket or even kapata in this hot weather, no, as we used to do in it, on the shoulders like a cape. It, it, I, What's the aloch in that respect? I think it's okay. And what I've told boys, that we have some boys who used to walk to the East End or the West End, um, and they asked this question. And I told them, Within Stanford Hill, keep it wear it normally. Once you what before you know, once you're out of the area, you can wear it on your shoulders. And the reason why I told them this was because there is a concept that Dvorim Hamutorim Vahirim Nohogu Bahen Isur Iatarashai Lahatiram Bifnayam. When something intrinsically is actually a permitted activity, but some people view it as an as a forbidden activity, you should not do it in their presence. Because people say if, if people let's say, in our shtetl, view wearing a jacket over your shoulders as, a, as a, a, not, it's not allowed. So, you know, and it, I think it wasn't such a difficult thing for them to be macabre, and so that's how we uh, re left it. But I mean, I did it actually okay. I think I remember, I think I asked once of Zalman Shimon, who also was uh, uh, permitted, permitted it. The next thing I have on my list is I, about making a medical appointment. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Two things. Could you wear a talus around your neck as a scarf if it's no. cold? No. Because that's no. in the talus and cupellas. Okay. And number two. Uh, uh, that's the club of the dinner game. Okay, that's it. All right, you're coming back later. The sweater, maybe it could use it as a belt. That's what he meant around his trousers. All right, I, I thought of that. I was happy to see that this safer also agreed with me that this is, this is not the Derek Levisha. It's a way no, okay. of transportation. Okay. That's why, I mean, that's why the question, question, you know, when a person asks a question, you have to understand why they're asking the question. Obviously, there was a question. Let's go on. Someone asked me, they have a scheduled appointment, I don't know, it was neonatal, whatever, on, on a Shiva Sabatamos, on a Tisha Bob, you know, have the weekly, uh, or I don't know how often they have an, an appointment. Is it okay to have a, an appointment a medical appointment on a fast day. So what I responded is for Shiva or Subhatamas, it's not a problem. Tishabov, I felt it wasn't appropriate. Tishabov is a time when we don't say good morning, good morning. We don't we don't greet. 
it's uh, whatever other restrictions, but it's, I felt that you don't, you don't, you don't go for walks on Tisha B'Av. It's a time where we uh, kind of indulge, <laughs> indulge in our illness, if, you know, if, you have, if that's the right word. And therefore I didn't feel, if, if, I mean, if you had to, you had to, but sometimes I get this, you know, people buy tickets and they're going to be flying on Tisha B'Av. It's really very inappropriate. They, they, they didn't. They looked at the English calendar. They didn't realize it's Tisha B'Av. It's it's very inappropriate to be traveling on Tisha B'Av. In addition to the uh, questions la halacha, which is going to be uh, dehydration and all that, but it's just it's not the right time to be meeting people in in a uh, in a you know in a normal manner. Having just addressed that, also the question about having a medical procedure. If there is a a need for a medical procedure, um, which can which is scheduled. One will try to avoid having in the three weeks, certainly during the nine days, as much as possible. But try to avoid this, and because these are, it says in Shulchan Aruch, um, the Malamed shouldn't strike the children. That used to be a, a normal behavior. You mustn't talk about it too loud. Um, so, uh, but during the three weeks, it shouldn't be striking the children, because it's a time where we have to be much more um, conscientious. Of, of safety, etc., and therefore, uh, doing a, having a medical procedure, depending obviously on what the risk is, but it's something which lechatchila should be avoided during these uh, three weeks. Here we have a uh, the next. We're going on to the next thing about mezuzah on a washroom. So often you have this situation. You have a, 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 a I think it's actually regulations in many countries that the toilet is not open straight to the corridor. There's first a another room. Uh, in public buildings, you have first a like a washroom area, and then you have the toilets which open onto there. So the question was, do you need a mezuzah on the entrance? It's the same room, it's just you're looking from to the right and to the left, so you can see what it is. Um, so does this little room require a mezuzah? So now, does a the, generally a room to be required to require a mezuzah for the door has to be four amas square. Four amas is about two meters square, a little bit, approximately two, um, two meters square. What about a smaller room, like a walk-in closet, a larder, etc., where you walk in? If it's just shelves, you don't go, there's certainly no mezuzah. But if it's a walk-in closet, so then there are opinions which say the following. There's a safer called Hamude Daniel, and he says the following. That which it says that a house has to be four amas square. To have it to require a mezuzah, that's talking about a freestanding house. You have a shed, you have a, a little uh, a booth, that's your house. But you have a whole house. So it's a living place. So part of it is also you've got little, little rooms which are serving as larders, as, as whatever it may be, a storage. That's part of the house. So he said that's high the mezuzah. That's what he writes. So generally, not everyone agrees with this. So if you have a walk in larder, a walk in closet, so one would put, on, put up a mezuzah without a bra. Here, there's further mitigating. So this, I asked the, the owner of this house, does it have two meters, does it have a dal damas, dal damas? So it wasn't, it was 230 by 140. So the area even was less than the area of four by four amas. So, and then it's a washroom. If, so I'm not going to go Someone's unmuted. How do I get Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Good, okay. So in Beis Lubavitch, the, the room, the, the, the washroom before the, before the toilets does have a mezuzah, and that was there since the building was built 50 odd years ago. And, uh, but the idea there is also that that room is also used as a washroom or as another function. It's not just uh, toffle to the toilet. At any rate, what I told him is if that outer room would have dal 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 amas, it would be two meters square approximately, then I would say put up a mezuzah. But if it actually isn't, then therefore I told him not to put up a mezuzah. 